Was that now? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us. We're back to church at home. I hope you are staying home, staying safe, and we are glad that you can join us online today. We have a special message from Baden, and Hannes will bring us the Bible reading and closing. And uh, most of the youth were going to join us at 10.30, at our services live today, but uh, they are staying home just like the rest of you. So let me open with a prayer of the day. God of crisis, you lay before us either blessing or curse. In our confusion, give us clarity, and in our hesitation, the courage to choose boldly the way that leads to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Isn't it wonderful, whatever life throws at us, we can rejoice in the Lord. The scripture says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So I don't know how you're feeling at home in shutdowns again, but we hope today that you're drawn closer into the heart of God because his heart for you is so big. His love for you is present wherever you are and he just wants you to know him more and more. Sometimes we feel out of control. Our world is out of control. We can't control what's going on with the pandemic, with the government, <laughs> a lot of things. We just have to let go and trust. We trust the Lord that he has us. He has us in his hands, in, our, in his arms and we can turn to him and be reminded of this serenity prayer, which I'd also like to pray now. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking, as he did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will. So that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him in the next forever and ever. Amen. So friends, today just sit back and relax. Have a cuppa if you like. And we'll bring you uh, the good news from the scriptures and a message for you at home. God be with you. Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is from John 16, verse 16 to 33. In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? They kept asking, What does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to her child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice, and no one will take you away from your joy. In that day you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked from, for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and I have believed that I came, came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then the disciples asked, said, now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. You believe at last, Jesus answered, but a time is coming and has come when you will, need, when you will be scattered, each to his own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that you may have peace. 
In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. So today I'll be bringing you the sermon, and I'm so excited, except this lockdown really changed all of our plans, didn't it? You see, we were going to have a youth-led service at the 10.30 session, and because of that, I've had to change a few things in my um, sermon right at the last minute, but hopefully it all translates, and I'm sure you guys will get a lot out of this. So today we'll be speaking about faith, anxiety, and trust. I will be speaking out of my own experience and John 16, the Bible verse that was just read by Hannes. Now, with Bible verses, usually there's different approaches that you can take, but I decide why don't we just start at the beginning and work our way forward. But before we do that, I originally had this idea to give you all a taste of what youth was going to be like, but I've had to change that, and so I want to share with you a personal story that I had. Now, Who's ever played the game 20 questions? I played all the time, oh, Jess just put her hand up. I played all the time with my kids at my schools. And I think it's pretty fun. Now, for, for you guys out there who don't know how the game works, there'll be one person who will choose a person, a place, or a thing, and they won't tell anyone. Then everybody else has 20 questions, and they have to try and figure out who it is. But the thing about 20 questions is, you don't get direct answers back. You have to ask questions that can't just be, who is it, or what is it, or where is it? It has to be, is it a place? Are there, is it moving? Is it alive? Is it green? Is it blue? Does it jump? You have all these questions. But the other day, I was playing with this grade one student, and it was kind of funny because I kept on asking questions, but getting no closer to where this, this answer that this kid had. And I kept thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I'm running out of questions, what is this? And then I'd ask another one that I thought was going to give me all the answers, and then, nope, and I was down a question and closer to the end, and I got 10 questions left. And it was so funny because I was thinking to myself, like, I'll start off simple. Is it a person? No. Is it a place? No. Whatever. And I kept going, and eventually I got onto these questions where I was like, do they have muscles? Yes. Are they strong? Yes. Have you met them? Yes. Are they real? No. And then I got really confused. And every question I asked, the, the time constraint came closer and closer and closer, and I was starting to get anxious because I knew that I had no idea who it was, and I was about to run out of questions. Long story short, don't play 20 questions. Let's get on with the Bible reading for today. Now, I want to start at... Um, John 16, 16. Now, prior knowledge for this Bible verse is, well, pretty straightforward. Jesus is about to pray and then get arrested and then crucified. He's still with the disciples, though, and he's trying to warn them about what's going to happen, giving them a cryptic spoiler warning. Now, verse 16, if you were reading along, I would love you to, because it's really going to be looking at the specific words here. But verse 16 starts... Jesus went on to say, in a little while, you will see me no more. Then after a little while, you will see me. In classic Jesus fashion, no one knows what he's talking about. He's been cryptic and he's just confused the lot of them. But I've decided to look at this through a different lens. At university, when I was doing my Bachelor of Theology, I did a Greek unit, and I said, let's see if the original Greek actually clarifies something that's going on here. So if we get the verse out, you'll see Jesus went on to say, in a little while you will see me no more, then after a little while you will see me. Now, the original Greek is mikron kai ukete theorete me kai palin mikron kai opethesete me. The big thing here is that the Greek is using two different words where you, we use the same word twice. The first one, opethesete, is you will see. And then later on, we get theorete, which is behold. Now, 
Essentially, this doesn't change much, but we start to see that it's not just see me now, see me later, and it's see me now physically and will behold me later. See remarkably, be shocked and surprised. There's this difference here that Jesus is about to go off and come back something different, which for the rest of us, we all know what's about to happen, but the disciples get a little bit confused. On to verse 17 and 18. The next two verses are pretty clear. The disciples are confused and their anxiety is starting to come in. They've been given this answer that they just don't understand. It's not straightforward. It's like they've asked a 20 question and they've just got this answer that has thrown them off the deep end. They are then are hit Jesus with a wave of questions. What does this mean? What does that mean? What's going to happen? Jesus sees their stress and he thinks about what they're thinking about and he tries to clarify for them. The next few verses, 19 to 21, are incredibly important for a Christian, especially when they're burdened with um, something they don't understand, anxiety or, or pain. It says, Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grief, but your grief will turn to joy. But your grief will ginomai to joy. That's the Greek there. Here Jesus clarifies that the Greek is not going to be removed and then replaced with joy, but rather ginomai means to transform. Jesus is explaining that what they're about to go through is going to make them sad, but it will transform into joy. There will be this amazing transformation that happens and joy and happiness will come out of that. And that changes a little bit of the verse. Then we move on to the next part where Jesus tries to clarify this further. And as I go through, I'm trying to clarify things to make it easier to understand. However, the thing is, this next verse is the best metaphor you'll ever get to understanding what has just been said. And I tried to think of an easier way to explain it, but I just couldn't. It says, a woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into this world. So with you now, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice. No one will take away this joy. See, God here has now acknowledged that he's not taking away this grief and then replacing it. It is being transformed. As a Christian, I pray every day to be like Jesus in many different ways. But as I grow as a Christian, I just feel like I'll never be on his level with his metaphors. I think that was the perfect way of putting it. See, when I get older, the more metaphors I use get more weird and bizarre. But that's just me. In verse 22 to 24, Jesus explains that there will come a time where this grief and anxiety is basically vanished. It's turned into something else. It's not recognizable. It comes to a section on asking and you will receive. Now, for years, this passage, if I'm being honest, just annoyed and confused me. Ask and you will receive. Ask and you will receive. All right, I'll ask, so I'll receive something, right? So I kept asking, and every time I'd take my problems to God and I'd get this weird, confusing answer back or or not even get an answer back and I would just get more and more confused. Every time I was struggling with something I would ask. Anytime I was anxious I would pray. Anytime I wanted more time in the day I would beg. But time after time after time I got nothing in return. I received no message, no sign, no answer to my questions. For God that strives to have a relationship with us, this verse served more as a reminder that there was never going to be the response that I wanted. At my worst moments, people would use this verse as kind of like a a band-aid. Oh, just pray and you shall receive. And it kind of seems like an excuse for them to just put the band-aid on and walk off or change the conversation. It was not just a fix to all of my solutions. Till this week, when I had an epiphany, I just realized like this verse, oh my gosh, It clicked. I understand what it means now. Because what I was looking at was this verse, and I never understood why this verse was being linked to trust and faith until I realized that, well, this verse is linked to trust and faith. 
the question to all of you at home and even here, have you ever not asked a question because you knew what the answer was going to be? Oh, they're not going to let me do that. There's no, I won't even ask. See, when I was a kid, I kind of did the opposite. Every time we were driving in the car with my mum or dad, when I was five or six, I would just randomly scream, Mum! And of course, they would be, what? What's going on? And I would turn, can we get Maccas? Because I knew that I wanted Maccas so bad, and if I asked, there was a 1% chance that they would say, you know what, yeah, I could go for a hamburger. I asked because I had trust that the response was going to be a yes. For years, I thought the secret to this verse was in the act of asking. But in reality, Jesus isn't begging you to just ask. He wants you to get to the stage of faith that you are confident in what the response is going to be. Jesus isn't begging you to just ask. He wants you to be 100% sure that you know what the answer is going to be. And that's where I came up with this acronym for faith. You see, faith is just fickle, anxious individuals trusting him. A little acronym I have made for just for this. On to the next verses, though. From verse 25 says, Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming where I will no longer use any kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day you will ask my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me. And I have come from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then, the G- then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and you don't even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. This part here always makes me laugh because Jesus basically says, there's going to be a time where you understand what I'm saying and that's the time that I'm going to leave you all. And then the disciples go, oh, here's a time that we understand everything that you're saying, but they don't click that this means that Jesus is about to leave them and everything he's talked about in the past. Then, verse 33, we're left with a final message of hope from Jesus. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome this world. A final response, a reminder, a beacon of faith, just a reminder of his amazing power and glory. We all face anxiety in our lives. Like when we're asking question after question and getting no clear answers as to what the final solution is. We get the primary school game equivalent of God works in mysterious ways with that doesn't really answer my question. The Jesus that left the disciples came back to the world in a remarkable way. He left us with the Holy Spirit to continue his mission. Instead of seeing God with our physical eyes, we behold, we saw him in this remarkable, amazing way. The anxiety and grief that we all face in our lives isn't given to us so that it can just be taken away and we could experience it. But in fact, it's given to us so that it can transform into joy and something wonderful. I recently got diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. And basically, that means I have panic attacks quite regularly, where I'll just be stressed or be stuck with this weird random thought in my head that I just can't shake. But with the help of God, I found a way to transform these things into joy. There was a time I was convinced that I was going to die. I ended up going to the doctor and getting all these tests done and found out that I'm actually really healthy and I was perfectly fine and there was nothing to worry about. There was other times that I was convinced I was going to get called into the office to be fired for something. Yet when I was eventually called into the office, I got given a promotion or a chance for growth in my job and area. There was times where I thought that I was going to, I'd said something that really just upsets my wife only for me to tell her and she just laughs at the weird and wonderful thought that I had. Like verse 24 says, ask and you receive, but do not ask for the sake of asking. Ask because you have grown and achieved a level of trust that you know what the answer is going to be. 
Ask because you have got a point in your relationship with Jesus where you trust and you know exactly what that answer is going to be. Remember, it's not just in the act of asking. After all, faith is an acronym for fickle, anxious individuals trusting him. So I want to leave you with one last Bible verse. Hebrews 11, verses 1 and 6. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Before we finish here today, I want you guys to just bow your heads with me now. Think about a time that you've been anxious or burdened with something and that you haven't been sure what it's leading to and the answers that you're getting and the signs and responses from God aren't making anything clearer. And just think about that specific time. Maybe it's something at work or in your school or something with your family or maybe this lockdown. But just think about it right now with us as we pray. I want you to have that part there. And I want you to see Jesus come in and start to work that thing. He's not removing that anxiety or that grief, but he's transforming it into something wonderful and joy so that you see it now just as it is, but you will behold it as something remarkable in the future. See, God wants that relationship with you. He doesn't just want you to be doing something out of a chore, but he wants you to know what the answer and response is going to be. He wants to, you to know that he's transforming that grief. Thank you, CCD. I'll be passing over now to Tanya to lead us in a Bible uh, prayer. Sorry. Thanks so much, Baden. What an encouragement to our faith and a reminder uh, to, to rejoice in the Lord always and do not be anxious about anything, Philippians tells us. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we're going to do that now. We're going to continue in prayer. And I have been sent a beautiful prayer by Annalise, who was scheduled to do the prayers at 10.30 and our 10.30 service, youth service today, of course, which isn't happening. So I'm praying Annalise's prayer on her behalf. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege we have of still gathering in spirit to worship you and be in your presence. Thank you for protecting us all during these times of uncertainty and for your mercies, care and continual love for us. We humbly ask your forgiveness for our sins, wrongdoings and where we have fallen short of your will for our lives. Help us to forgive those that have sinned against us. May you heal our hearts and minds and guide us with your word to serve you in every area of our lives. We pray for this new lockdown, that you will guide the state and federal governments and leaders, and bless all hospital and medical personnel with strength. We especially pray for the elderly and those struggling with physical and mental illness, finances and family conflict during this time. We pray for those in all nations, those who are facing persecution for your name and those serving you on the mission field, may you protect them and give them your strength to stand firm in their faith. We also remember to give you thanks. Thank you for your creation and blessing us with the beautiful rainbow the other day, reminding us of your promises towards us. Thank you for your provision of food and shelter. Thank you for the opportunity we still have to gather and worship you freely. We pray for those who have recently lost loved ones. May you give them your peace, joy and comfort during this difficult time. May you also bring healing to those who are unwell, suffering, facing mental or physical illness. 
We pray for this nation that you would bring the earth to its knees before you in repentance and help us not to grieve or be anxious but to rejoice in prayer and thanksgiving because we know that Jesus will come back again soon. Let us close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. We don't have much in the way of announcements for this week other than uh, many of the church's uh, activities have been put on hold for the lockdown. So um, yeah, everything uh, that we would have had, we'll give you updates on uh, via email and things like that. Um, but we hope you all have a blessed week and hope you stay safe and have a nice day.